Michael Hastings, who is a contributor to the Young Turks and to BuzzFeed and Rolling Stone, has passed away. He was involved in a car crash last night or early this morning at 4.25 a.m. here in Los Angeles. It was a single person accident. Uh, witness describes his car going at a very uh, fast pace and then uh, crashing, obviously, and as you can see, exploding. That is a horrible, horrible thing to look at. Um, it was at uh, Highland and Melrose here in Los Angeles. Michael was 33 years old. He was, in my opinion, one of the best journalists in the country, and I don't think you'd get a lot of dispute on that on people who are paying attention. Uh, he, of course, uh, broke the General Stanley McChrystal story that led to McChrystal's resignation, but that was one of many, many stories that he broke on national security issues, on the wars, Afghanistan, Iraq, on the Pentagon. One of the reasons he was among the best was because he actually challenged the government. He challenged the Pentagon, he did not believe them, and the rest of the press would often get angry with him. You're not supposed to report what they tell you or what you find out if you didn't get clearance. No, that's exactly what you're supposed to do, and that's exactly what Michael would do oftentimes. Now, I will go a little further here, and I think that at least part of his death can be attributed to our police state. Now the reality is, I, I knew Michael, he lived in LA, and uh, he was often here at the Young Turks, and he was very nervous about the government tracking him. That's because the government was very likely tracking him. Now it doesn't mean they did anything else, but it does mean that in a police state, Everybody, especially if you're a journalist, especially if you're a journalist that breaks really important stories that upsets the powerful, should be concerned that they're going to be tracked, that every, their every move is watched, every conversation is listened in on, and that every email is monitored. It doesn't mean that it necessarily was, but could it be? Absolutely. It has been in the past for other journalists, and right now we're in the middle of several scandals, the AP, Fox News, now uh, Cheryl Atkinson at CBS is absolutely convinced that uh, her uh, computer was hacked at home and at her work. So Michael Hastings, arguably, almost indisputably, indisputably among the three journalists that challenged the government most aggressively and broke the most relevant stories about the powerful, he wouldn't be tracked. He wouldn't have a right to be nervous. I don't know what led to his death on that particular night, but I do know that he was scared to death of the police state, and now he's dead. Is this the kind of country we want to live in? Is this uh, the state that we want to call America? I don't think this is what we had as an idea of America. Sam, your thoughts? Well, I mean, obviously, I mean, the loss of Michael is, is it's devastating. Um, he. You know, he was incredibly brave in reporting on, on what the government was doing, obviously, and all the stuff he did with McChrystal and JSOC. And, and he also uh, was very fearless in terms of dealing with the media establishment that uh, viewed him as, in many respects, as a pariah because he didn't, um, he didn't follow the, the conventions and rules that, the, that they had established so they could maintain the access to their sources. And, um, and I think, you know, your, uh, whether or not it's related to um, his, his, his accident and his death, uh, the idea that we have reporters who, and uh, Michael Hastings is just one of them. I mean, uh, Robert Greenwald did this film on, uh, on the whistleblowers where we heard from people like Jane Mayer uh, from The New Yorker and um, uh, Mazzetti from The Times. Uh, these are very well-established uh, reporters. And they, uh, they talk about you know, how it's chilled their reporting, but, but you know, it, when you just see it presented in that way, it's easy to isolate it, but these are, this is their lives. And there's, it would be, let's put it this way, it would be irrational for them not to assume uh, that they're being surveilled. I mean, it, it, it and, and this is very problematic, it, the, uh, because clearly our government has overstepped those bounds where, uh, where reporters have to think twice 
about, about uh, and in, in many cases, probably a lot more than you know, we can be aware of. Um, and I knew Michael, and he thought a lot about it, and, and he's not wrong to think about it. He's absolutely right. Well, of course, and you would be, you, it would be silly for you to assume that, no, there's no way that they would be, uh, they, they'd be tracking. Of course they are. And, um, and it, 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 like I say, it would be irrational for them to have any other thoughts because this is what they're doing. They are breaking stories. They are clearly upsetting the establishment, uh, not just of the press, but, but uh, of the national security state. And this is the environment that is created when you have secret laws, when you have senators of the United States uh, begging their staffers to get reporters to report on something that they can't even communicate to their staffers. Um, and this, this, is, this is how corrosive this is. Uh, and, and so, you know, we've heard, and, and we'll talk more about this as the show progresses, but we've heard that, uh, that supposedly uh, 50 attacks or how many ever attacks have been, have been stopped by this. And President Obama himself said, well, we don't know if it's exactly uh, thwarted this attack, but it gives us some uh, help on the margins. Well, you know, uh, putting a box in everyone's apartment in the country or, or house in the country that uh, surveils them would also seriously decrease the margins, right? But we don't do that because it's corrosive uh, to our society. And, and this is where the corrosion starts. Yeah, and you know what? At least in this case, it didn't lead to more security. It led to less security. Uh, and he was a deeply nervous guy for understandable reasons. And look, look at the, the targeting that happened of journalists, not just the government in the AP, the Fox News and the CBS stories, but also Glenn Greenwald uh, targeted by a private contractor. We know because anonymous splinter group LulzSec uh, hacked into the emails of three private contractors and HB Gary Federal literally had emails saying, we've got to target Glenn Greenwald because if we n knock him out, not meaning physically, but uh, in terms of his they reputation, were, yeah, that they, if we knock him out, that the rest of the press will go along because they're worried about their salaries and their profession, etc. So is it possible that private contractors, who by the way also closely work with JSOC and the Defense Department, etc., could have access to information, could have access to what you're doing. So that's another thing you have to worry about. Yeah, I mean, look, we know, at the very least, we know there's evidence of this uh, in regards to the fusion centers, which are these uh, Department of Homeland Security centers around the country, uh, set up ostensibly for, for Homeland Security. We know for a fact, uh, because of documents that came out, uh, I think in the past month, that the uh, Arizona fusion centers were sharing the information that they had uh, gathered on Occupy Wall Street with private companies uh, saying, heads up, these, uh, you're going to get protesters here. I mean, surely when we set up uh, Homeland Security and, and these type of apparatus, no one is contemplating that these are to protect private industry, right? Uh, to protect them from protesters. Uh, th I mean, that's just absurd, but that's what happens. This is a, you know, we hear the term slippery slope all the time, but this is what happens when you incentivize a security state based upon the billions upon billions upon billions of dollars that's being earned by private companies, and then it recycles itself. I mean, it, it, and suddenly the lines become blurred, and uh, there's, there's uh, like I say, this is incredibly corrosive. In many respects, these types of reporters, the, the, the type of reporter that Michael Hastings was, um, are the, um, uh, the canaries in the coal mine. Uh, because this is where that corrosion starts. This is where that corrosion of value starts. Well, I don't know what the government did or didn't do specifically in the case of Michael Hastings and tracking him or not tracking him, of course. I don't work at the NSA, I'm not, you know, I don't have access to that information. But I do know that Michael was deeply concerned about the government and the police state and the national security complex and he was worried that they were out to get him. Now he's dead at the age of 33.